Hey, what's up guys? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. Today is the start of a new series in which we will be recreating the game Geometry Dash. So to give you exactly what we will be creating, I have it coded right here and this is all coded in Java and we'll be creating a whole level editor and everything and you can play the Geometry Dash game right here. So you'll notice it should look exactly the same as the real game because that's what I was going for. And then if you hit one of the objects that kills you, it kills you. So this is what we're going to be making. Um, real quick, before we actually start coding, I just want to go through a list of topics that we'll be covering throughout making this game, different things that we'll be learning, because we're going to be essentially creating a little bit of a 2D game engine. We're not going to be following best practices with everything, but I will try and follow the best practices with what makes sense and try and follow best practices with as much as we can while still keeping this as simple as possible. So. Let's see what topics we'll be covering real quick. Okay, so we're gonna be coding Geometry Dash in Java and what are we gonna be learning along the way? I have a few of the different things just listed here that we will be learning about as we create this 2D engine. So one of the first things that we're gonna be doing is, I'm sure you've probably heard of this if you've used Unity or um, Unreal, you're familiar with this uh, idea which is an entity component system. And so what this means is that we will not have game objects that are updated. We will rather have game objects that have components attached to them. So say you have a object in your game world, um, that object can have scripts attached to it. It can have uh, box colliders attached to it and all these different things. And so we'll be coding a game engine that supports that. Second thing we'll be doing is serialization slash deserialization. So what I mean by this is the ability to create a level and then to output a uh, formatted file that contains the level data so that you can then load that data back in again. So basically like a saving and a loading system, but a little bit more complex because we'll be doing that for the entire level. And then we'll go into some compression techniques that we can use using Java to make sure that the levels don't take up too much space. After that, we'll be doing some simple physics. So we will be going over um, very simple physics. It's basically just gonna be some box collision detection against uh, other boxes and then collision detection against triangles, which we'll use a broad phase collision detection first, which we uh, do a circle that encapsulates the triangle. And then if it fails that, or like we see that we're colliding with that, then we'll move on to a narrow phase collision detection in which we actually detect whether the player is hitting that triangle. And this will be also simpler because we don't have to worry about um, having multiple dynamic objects. We just have one dynamic object, the player, the rest of the objects are static, which will simplify a lot of things for us, which is nice because it's a good introduction to physics, but it's not too terribly complex. And then I call this a pull-based UI system. Um, not sure if that's the actual term for it, but what I mean is we're not going to have an event-driven UI system. So mm -hmm. instead, we're going to have all of our UI actually be part of the game world. So there could be like game objects and updated, and we'll just pull for things like whether the users clicked or something. So that's nice, and this keeps a little bit simpler too because an event-driven system is a little bit more complicated. I do want to go over that, but I'm waiting until we do a little bit bigger of a project. And then one of the last things which you saw me using a little bit was the level editor. So you'll be able to drag objects in and actually create a level um, using the level editor that we built for this game specifically. And then lastly, transformations and camera movements. In the previous games that we've done, Snake and Pong, you haven't really had to worry about the camera moving, and so you haven't had to transform objects. And so in this, we're gonna be going over how to have a moving camera and how to render everything in its correct positions on the screen, and then also how to scale things. So like uh, making something bigger, zooming the camera in, zooming the camera out, and we'll go over all that different stuff. So this is a little bit of a high level overview of what we will be covering throughout creating this 2D engine. So without further ado, I'd like to just get started and code the first little bit, get some of the boilerplate code out of the way so that we can start coding the rest of it. All right, so first thing we're gonna wanna do is open up IntelliJ. If you don't have that installed, I would definitely recommend installing it. It's so nice and helps a lot when you're uh, creating all this different code. Uh, one other thing that we're gonna cover too, which I forgot, is actually packaging this project and pushing it, so publishing a project. So that'll be interesting too, in case you've never done that, especially with a Java project, okay? So we're gonna go up here, file, and we're gonna say a new project. And then we're gonna say it's a new Java project. I'm using Java 11, hit next. And then we're just gonna hit next. And then I'm gonna call this project Geometry Dash. And I'm gonna 
go into my folders and I'm gonna put this inside of C and then I have this folder called dev Java projects and then I'm gonna create a new folder in here. Just call this geometry dash. And then I'm gonna put my project in here. So I'll hit okay. And then hit finish on that. We will open it up in a new window. And then once we have that up and running, let's go into here. And then I'm gonna go and create, I'm gonna click on source and click a new package. And so this will be our first package. And I'm just gonna call this com.main. So just like that. And this is just gonna contain our main class and like maybe a couple other helper function or classes that we might need. So I'm just gonna create a new class in here and I'm just gonna call this main. Okay, and so inside of our main class, we're just going to have a standard method. We will say public static void main string args. This is just Java syntax, basic syntax to create um, an entry point for our program. Okay, and then we're gonna create a class called window. So I'm just gonna do this for now. Window equals window dot get window. And this will contain all the code necessary for uh, building our window. <laughs> Okay, so then we're gonna have an initialization function. So we'll just call window.init. Then we're gonna say thread t1 equals a new thread window. And I'm just gonna call this main thread. Okay, and then we will just say main thread dot start. And now let's get rid of this error real quick. It's saying window is not a class. Okay, and so then we'll just go into our source and then let's create a new path once more, or new package, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna call this Jade, and this is just the name of this simple game engine that I'm giving it. It's the coolest thing I could come up with, so <laughs> we'll just bear with it. Okay, and then we're gonna go into here and we'll create a new class called Window, which is gonna contain all of this stuff that we're going to need. And so this window is going to extend JFrame and it's going to implement Runnable. And the reason that we are implementing Runnable like this is because it's actually just easier to stop and start a thread than it is to like pause execution. So like if we ever need to pause the game, then we can just sort of do a thread.sleep inside here or if we need to pause a little bit. And so that's just nice. And I'm gonna hit Alt Enter to import JFrame and just change this to JFrame. Okay, and then inside of this class, we're gonna get our first method, which we used inside of main, which is window.getWindow. So we'll do a public static void get window. And up here, we will have a private window um, window. And so this is just whatever this window is, and we're gonna make this static. So then inside of here, this is just a simple singleton. We will say if window.window .window equals null, then window dot window window dot window equals a new window and we'll pass it some parameters too real quick and then we will just return window dot window there we go that way you just have a concrete instance and we want to make this return a window not void so that should be good for this get window class then let's create a initializer in here real quick too so this is just gonna be very simple, the same as we've done before. So we'll just say public window, and we will just say this dot set size, and then we're gonna create a constants class that holds all this information. So for now, we'll just say create it, say uh, 1280 by 720, I might decrease that, we'll see. And this dot set title, uh, title of the window, so we'll just say geometry dash, we'll make this a constant as well this dot set resizable. We're gonna set this to false because we don't want the user resizing this. This dot set visible to true. And then we're gonna say this dot set default close operation jframe dot exit on close. That way it just closes it whenever it exits. And we'll say this dot add key listener. Uh, we'll actually wait on this one for just a second until we create those key listeners and mouse listeners real quick. And then we're gonna say this dot set location relative to null and so this one's a new one that we haven't used before well, all this is going to do is it's going to make sure that the window is centered whenever it creates it on the screen so it's just going to create it inside right in the center of the screen which is nice so if we run this real quick if we go back to our main and make sure we don't have any errors again it says does not know where this is coming from so we'll import the class from jade and then it says it needs an init function so let's go in our window class real quick one more time 
and then we'll just have a public void in it and this will be what we use to initialize any sort of variables and stuff that we may need inside of our window class so we go back to our main no errors and if you go up here and you hit build or run and then you hit run right here then just hit main this will run it for the first time and we get a window in the center and this looks good i like the size of this and everything it says geometry dash we can move it you can't drag it you can minimize it or i mean you can't resize it and then you can close it and it closes just fine so we have our basic window up and running all of that is great uh, let's do one more thing let's set up a simple game loop real quick and then in the next video we'll set up a key listener and a mouse listener and a mouse motion listener and get all that stuff out of the way real quick all right so in order to set up our game loop we're going to need another helper class real quick so let's go into source let's create one more new package and these files like we're going to be creating a lot of new ones at the beginning but it should cool down a little bit as time goes on we'll call this util this will contain all of our utility classes and stuff so we're going to call this one time and time is going to be a very simple class that we use just to get whatever the current time is so We've done this before too. We'll just say public static double time started. So whenever this uh, class is initialized, it will get whatever time it's currently at. And then we'll have a public static double get time. And then we will return system.nano time minus time started. And I believe we're going to be multiplying this by 10 to the minus 9. So we'll say times. 1 e to the minus 9 that will just make sure that we get the result in seconds and we don't get the result in something a little bit harder to work with okay so then we'll go back to our window class and we will implement this time method and start our game loop real quick so we're going to need a few different variables uh, this is very similar to what we've done before too though so last frame time this is the time that it took to render the last frame try well to update and render the last frame we'll have a try catch just in case we want to make the thread sleep or anything like that in between and then right here we'll just print the stack trace if there's an error and then ideally we would just exit out which it would do so then we'll say double time equals time dot get time so this is going to give us the time at the start of the frame we'll import that real quick i'll enter then we'll say double delta time equals time minus last frame time so delta time is going to be equal to the current time that we have so the beginning of this frame minus whenever the last frame time started and then we'll set last frame time to now and then we'll update everything so and we'll pass it delta time so basically what's going to happen is last frame time will store the time that was here and then we're going to update everything and then delta time is going to store the time that's transitioned since we've done this okay and then in order to do this we're going to need a simple update function so we'll say public void update takes in a double delta time and so inside of here it should update our game so if we just print out dt then we should see it printing out every single like very quickly so down in this lower left hand corner we see it's printing out and i see that i'm actually in the way so i'm just gonna move that real quick okay so if we go one more time and we go into here we see it prints out once but it doesn't keep printing out so what's going on there so we have this update time and we forgot the while true <laughs> so basically we want this to continue while the game is running so we'll have a new boolean variable up here and we'll just call this is running so we'll go up here private boolean is running equals true and then that will just be set to false whenever the game is not running so run this one more time and it should print out there we go and so you can see it's printing it out and i forgot to print line but it's just printing out the time that's been elapsed since it updated last and so it's just going very quickly and this is in seconds so it's a very small number um so yeah that about covers it so next tutorial what we're going to be going over is just setting up the mouse listener the key listener getting that other boilerplate code out of the way sort of and then we'll start diving into actually creating the geometry dash game okay and if you guys want to see more of like what i have built already and how that looks and stuff i will be posting another video of me actually creating an ai and everything to beat it and that will show the whole process of me creating the game and then creating the ai and seeing the ai learn how to play the game okay hope you guys enjoyed if you did please hit like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next tutorial thanks